this is a photograph of the men's meeting of St Andrew's Church New Haven, the church in the background, which is now the Alien Rock Climbing Centre down at New Haven Harbour. As you can see, there were lots and lots of men in the men's meeting in those days. They are about to go on a bus outing. You can see two of the buses in the background. Some people have probably recognised some of their relatives in there. I certainly know some of my relatives are in it. I don't know a date, but I think most likely the 50s. But it might be, might be the 60s. The men's meeting had a lot of people coming along on a Sunday afternoon, rather, in the upper hall to sing. And of course they sang from the Sankey hymn book because they wanted to sing arousing tunes. A load of men singing like they did in New Haven was really quite something to hear, rousing. In the afternoon, lots of people came down to the harbour and they used to stand up against the harbour wall and listen to the singing. It was so wonderful. As well as that, they had a more social evening every fortnight, Monday evening, I think, called the Men's Guild. And every so often, they would have a social. My mother's cousin, who was like another brother to her and was always known as Bo, although he was really Alec, but anyway, he was Eki Bo because his father had been Eki Bo. What a surprise. Bo had a magnificent tenor voice. I always wish I'd recorded them, but unfortunately I never did. In the week before the social, he would come along to me to see what music I had. He didn't read music, but they did have a pianist. One woman was allowed in. I can't remember who, but one woman was allowed in as a pianist. So he would want to know what music he could borrow from me. Sometimes it would be a Scottish song, like Mary of Argyll in particular, because my mother always said, sing Mary of Argyll, Bo, you sing that very well. Sometimes it would be, uh, I'll take you home again, Kathleen. And of course he borrowed the music, but he always brought it back, let me see. Now, when he was choosing the songs, his wife used to tease the life out of him and say, they pair souls have got my sympathy. Have they really got to listen to you singing? What a shame, pair things. Anyway, he selected two songs, and then he would say, and now I need something for an encore. An encore, his wife Lizzie would say, an encore, oh, they pair souls. They've not got to listen to you singing, and then they've got to listen to an encore as well, have they? Anyway, how do you know that you'll get an encore? Now, our upper hall had a platform, right? So the performers were up there. So it used to be quite indignant, of course, and he'd say, oh, I always have to do an encore. They won't let me off the platform without doing an encore. So he duly selected the third one, and when he came back the following week, sure enough, he would say, yes, he sang two, and he sang an encore, right enough. I usually supplied the music, but once, just once, he came along with a piece of music which he said he had bought. I suspect, really, his wife, Lizzie, had bought it, but he said he had bought it. And he said this is what he wanted to sing, because Lizzie liked the song, and Lizzie said he sang it very well. And this is a piece of music in question. And he assures me that that went down very well with the men, and they did ask for an encore that day, so he must have done it justice. Anyway, that's the only piece of music, as far as I know, that he ever bought. And he didn't read music, as I say, so it was no good to him, so he did give me it as a souvenir. Like I say, uh, I cannot imagine he bought it himself because the price is four shillings. So I'm afraid he was very canny with his money. So I think the chances of him splashing out four shillings on this are pretty slim. So I'm pretty well certain that it was Lizzie that bought it. But anyway, I believe his audience appreciated it.